Mamas, welcome to Mental Health Mondays today. I'm Carrie with Reset Brain and Body, joining you to talk about seasonal affective disorder. So seasonal affective disorder, SAD, as you might know it, affects one in five adults. And so it's a lower percentage that really experience the acute, more crises-related seasonal affective disorder, about 6% of the population, but up to 20% of adults experience mild seasonal affective disorder. So seasonal affective disorder typically comes in around November and lasts until March or April. And as you can understand, it has to do with the rhythms of the sun and the seasons. We're getting less daylight, we're indoors more, and that produces a both chemical and then also emotional response in relation to the weather. So we're getting just less socialization, less time outside, less time with daylight, and that can create a sort of mood disorder. So this can show up as general depression type of symptoms like irritability, fatigue, hopelessness, um, social withdrawal, the inability to connect to people or just the lack of desire, lack of being able to stay motivated or concentrate, um, just general withdrawal, feelings of hopelessness as well. So um, with this, there are some key things that we can do. And I wanna start out with the first part is identifying a plan for yourself. So if you are someone who you know experiences seasonal affective disorder or you know someone that does, come like September, October, it start to, it's, it's the time to start to figure out what you're gonna do about it. I love my husband, he's amazing, and he can experience this rhythm every year. And so the last few years we've been together, I've said, okay, what are we gonna do? Like in September, <laughs> what are we gonna do? What's our plan? Because this isn't gonna fly all winter. We have two kids, like we, we have to figure something out. And, and so we sit down and we say, okay, we know that he might experience some mild seasonal affective disorder this winter. So here are the steps we're gonna take. So being honest with yourself or your loved ones, if this is something that you recognize happens every season, being okay with it, being vulnerable about it, having no shame around it, it's really important to just open the windows to it and recognize it for what it is and that you're not a failure. There's nothing horribly wrong with you. You didn't do anything wrong. You didn't bring this upon yourself. It's just something that might happen every winter for you. Okay, so the first step is to identify that plan if you know that this is something that you experience. But if you don't and you can't prepare or predict for it, that's okay. The other thing that you should have in your house is light therapy or a lamp. So this is something that you can find anywhere online, Amazon, you can find them super cheap or get a really fancy one, it doesn't matter, but you're asking for about 30 minutes a day. And it's also been proven that 30 minutes at the very beginning of the day, so probably when it's still dark outside when you're waking up to have that light therapy. So it's a great spot to drink your coffee, drink your tea, have some quiet time, have that light therapy on you for 30 minutes a day. Of course, this next one we know is exercise. So even if it's only five minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 15 minutes, just to be able to move your body, get a sweat going, get those endorphins going, we know that exercise is important. Have a question about the light therapy lamp. Yes, it really does work. So the Depression Center at University of Michigan in Ann Arbor did a whole study about seasonal affective disorder and they found that 30 minutes of light therapy a day really does help relieve the symptoms of seasonal affective disorder. So it's really simple, but it's just something that we need and we can really help remedy the situation for ourselves. Okay, the other thing is when it comes to wintertime, we typically want comforting foods. We want heavier foods, we want maybe more fatty foods, and this is actually the not the right time to be eating foods like that because what your body needs is light and fresh and vibrant and nourishing foods. So trying to you know create smoothies for yourself, add in a lot of raw vegetables, make a big salad every day, really pack in those light and fresh types of foods. If you guys are familiar with Ayurveda at all, that's the kind of yogic science of health and 
medicine, they talk about different seasons when we need to be eating different foods. And a lot of times in the winter, again, we go towards those like grounding wet foods, but it isn't necessarily what we want or need. Instead, we need to stay light and fresh and vibrant in our food sources. If inherently we're going to be slowing down, we're going to be less active. Okay, so that's number three, light foods. Vitamin D, so getting a vitamin D supplement in your life right now with COVID, they're saying vitamin D is a really important supplement to have. So just having a chewable or a pill that you can take every day, vitamin D, this is something you can buy anywhere. I really like the Mary Ruth's brand. It's organic. It comes, um, it's a vitamin D and K chewy. I give it to my son as well. He loves it. <laughs> I think it's mango flavored. It's delicious. Um, okay, number five, get outside. So in the winter, we definitely don't want to go outside because we're freezing and it's icy and we're afraid we're going to slip, but getting that fresh air is so important for your mood. And it can be as simple as just opening up your windows if you're driving or opening up your windows when you're working, but trying to get outside for a couple minutes. If you have a dog, your dog still needs to get outside and get a walk, regardless of what the weather is, just bundle up and it will be so rejuvenating for yourself to get outside. The other thing that's counterintuitive during winter is to get up early. So I know the sun does not rise until about 7.30 in the morning. All we wanna do is stay in bed longer, but it's really important to actually wake up earlier right now. So if you can still get up at 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning, really start your day fresh, start your day excited. It's really easy to sleep in and then you're rushed when you wake up or the kids are pounding on your door asking for breakfast and you haven't given yourself that buffer time to maybe sit in front of your light therapy lamp or just kind of slowly ease your way into the morning versus feeling rushed. Also, it creates more of that motivation and adrenaline in the morning if you're saying, okay, I'm going to get up and I'm going to get things done. So a Moving along, so that's the sixth thing, waking up early. To wake yourself up early, I have one of these and it is my favorite household gadget right now other than my coffee machine, let's be honest. <laughs> but I have one of those alarm clock, um, that's the sunlight. And then you can also do a sunset setting. Uh, and I can link to this in the post, but it's one of those um, daylight dawn simulator alarm clocks. And this is such a peaceful way of waking up in the morning. I set it to wake up, you know, about a half hour before the kids wake up, predictably. <laughs> we all need to have our own hacks for that. But it is a gradual brightening of the sun. And so by the time I wake up, it goes from orange to bright white, and it is such a peaceful way of waking up. It's almost as if the sun's peeking up through my windows. I love waking up that way, and that also you're getting some of that light therapy. You can also use it when you go to bed and kind of slowly dims you down. There's music options. It's really great. So when you are waking up earlier, using one of these dawn simulator alarm clocks, instead of the blaring, and instead of using your phone, which then you hop on right away and you start scrolling, right? Or checking email or responding to text messages. Okay, so with this, with getting up early, we want to get on a routine. And that's really important too, to going to bed at the right time, waking up at the same time every day. And I know it's hard. Trust me, I get it. Last night, I think I was on my couch till 11 o'clock at night doing I don't know what, but it was finally quiet and I wanted alone time. I totally, totally get it. But... If you know you're going to wake, be waking up, let's say around six o'clock, okay, can you get to bed by 10 o'clock? Because we want to get really good, consistent sleep every night. This helps for every single type of our moods, but really is effective in combating seasonal affective disorder as well as getting on that routine, not feeling so sluggish and outside of that routine just because it's dark so early. We need to try and stay with our circadian rhythms. This is the time of year when it's really easy to stay up until two, three in the morning just because we can or because it's dark anyways and it's like, oh, who cares? Not, not the best for your health though. Okay, the next thing on our list, number nine, is to meditate. And those of you that have not yet started a meditation practice, I urge you this holiday season to this be the time. You can download an app like Headspace or Calm or my favorite is free and it is Insight Timer. And this is really important to have one that is accessible to you and it feels easy to use. 
So any one of these apps is going to be able to teach you how to meditate and get you into a practice. And even just doing 90 seconds a day, that can be a meditation practice. Or you can go ahead and do 20 minutes, but just some sort of grounding exercise where you clear out the mind. Not entirely because that's impossible, but at least you're kind of witnessing the intrusive thoughts, witnessing the distraction and just trying to manage it a little bit more, right? We talked about managing the monkey mind as we learn how to meditate. And this is just a really nice way to refresh, kind of clear out the clutter, to quiet the noise and come back to yourself. Always encourage meditation practice any time of year, but in the winter especially as we're trying to kind of combat these winter blues. So the other thing is to talk to someone about this. If you're finding that with making a plan and exercising and eating well and waking up at the same time every day and having a fancy alarm clock and using your light therapy, taking your vitamin D supplements, meditating, and it's still not enough and you're still feeling those symptoms of irritability and hopelessness and lack of motivation and fatigue, then it's time to talk to someone because then it's like, okay, what other tools do we need to put in place? How might this be related to something a little bit deeper? Why is it that I get depressed every winter? What is it that maybe I haven't dealt with? Maybe there's some things a little bit below the surface, or maybe you could just be getting some really simple CBT tools that are custom to you from your therapist that helps you work through this transition. But recognizing that it's temporary is something that you can really work on with a therapist, right? So a lot of times we use this type of theory called acceptance and commitment therapy, and that's where we're sitting with what is, embracing the unknowns, and practicing radical acceptance for it all, and recognizing we can't change it, we can't control it, I just have to move through it and find the best way to do that. And that's hard, it means sitting in uncomfortable feelings, it means embracing this winter for what it is, and just saying, okay, I'm gonna do the best I can, but it may not be my best that I want to be, and I can practice forgiveness with myself, I can give myself permission to just kind of coast through the next few months, recognizing that it is temporary, but I can accept it instead of resisting it and fighting it because I can name it, I know what it is, and I can then just find some peace of mind as I move through this period. Okay, lastly, asking for meditate or medication. So never before in my career have I referred so many people for medication. We are living in unprecedented times. This is more intense than anything in my history that we've had to deal with as a country. And so you are in a global pandemic. Things are hard already, and then it's going to be winter. So it's okay if you need some help, not only by talking to someone, but also if you need it in a medication form. So I know I have a wonderful integrative holistic doctor that I refer all of our clients to that looks at people comprehensively in then prescribing medication, but you can also work with your primary care physician, your OB, anyone in your life that can help steer you in that right direction and finding a doctor that can fit your needs with this. But it is okay to ask for help. Medication is like bridging the gap between where you want to be and where you want to go, but you know you need a little bit of help because if all these things that I listed, exercising, getting up earlier, creating a little bit of that buffer time, getting outside, taking a supplement, if you're like, I don't even have that motivation. Like I can't even muster up enough commitment or discipline to do that, okay, then maybe it's time to ask for a little bit of help, not only through a therapist, but then also maybe through medication. It is okay. Okay, I hope that this helps you today. Again, starting to identify what seasonal affective disorder is, how it shows up. One in five people, again, one in five people experience mild symptoms, and then how you can combat it, how you can beat seasonal affective disorder. Remember, it's temporary. It's about six months of your life. Think about it as postpartum. We know that we can get through it, but you don't have to get through it alone. You don't have to suffer through it. And that's really the important part. If you need any additional help, feedback, anything, please do reach out to us at Reset. We are here for you all the time, virtual or audio or in person even still during the lockdowns. I will mention in the comments what the link is for the dawn simulator alarm clock and wish you guys a very very happy holiday take care